Hi, I'm Pang Mo uh, from Rocket Scream. This is the part two of the HWGC pick and place machine uh, guide. Today we'll be doing the configuration and setup of the feeder. So let's begin. Mm, before I start, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, in this video, I'll be adding some annotation of the untranslated part of the software let's say we have a, uh, a menu or a dialog that is not translated uh, I will try to add an annotation there uh, but as I'm not an English native speaker because I in my daily life I speak a few languages actually and my translation might not be that accurate or precise so if you think that you can help to translate it better into English, please leave some comment down below and uh, I hope by doing this, uh, we will be able to compile all the untranslated part and submit this to HWGC so they could add them into next the next uh, software revision release. Right, let's start. Let's connect to the uh, machine. Then click on the create open dialog, open project because we have already created. Alright, I'm going to load the board now. Click on inboard. Right, and let's move the camera to the top of the PCB. Right. I have uh, added a bit of double-sided tape on the PCB because we will be doing some tests uh, on mounting the components on the PCB. As this is the panel consists of the six pieces of PCB, I have added a double-sided tape just on the first one on the top left and also the last PCB on the bottom uh, right. right. I usually would test the first one on the top left and the bottom most right to see that uh, even when the PCB is the last piece, the most, the furthest away from the first one, we must make sure that the mounting effect is uh, accurate and precise as the first one at the top left, right? So uh, when we stop in the last uh, part one of the video, I mentioned that how important it was for you to complete the mark setting and uh, this is the reason why because once you have taken out the board uh, the position of PCB will not be the same when the next time you load the PCB into the conveyor board, uh, board. so in order for the system, uh, software to recognize uh, to precisely accurately uh, know the position of your PCB there's this one step that you need to do which is the inboard check chips, right? This was previously implemented on the under the mark setting part, which is called the PCB correct. So this this particular PCB correct actually performed the same exact thing as this new function called inboard check chips. So, so you click on this inboard check chips, and it will ask you whether the PCB is already fixed on your conveyor belt. So click on yes. Then click on auto mark recognition. As you can see, our mark uh, detection uh, works perfectly. Right, once you have done that, it knows where the mark are. So, but we need to update the two. We need to click this update to PCB edit table. So, due to the adjustment needed uh, as the position of the PCB previously and now it's exactly not the same. Right, click on that and uh, click on yes then they will do the adjustment to your components right 
so now you can right click just to do a simple check right is still in the correct place for your components and you can just simply grab any components at the furthest side of the panel maybe this guy just to do a random check so everything is perfect so let's move on to the next stage so from here you the part under the pcb edit section this stage is basically completed so we need to go to the next stage which is the optimize click on the optimize and this dialog here that looks quite scary at first glance will pop up what we in this particular process what we need to do is basically to uh, assign your components to a feeder uh, what type of feeder it is uh, where which feeder you want to use and the nozzle that is being used to the to pick up that particular component and which which camera is being used whether it's the small front camera or the high definition big camera at the back and also the visual is something related to the visual modeling that they use to identify your component and this is another some mumbo jungle kind of word loop mode i'm not too sure about this because i'm not a vision uh, pro and low speed is basically just to make sure the the pick and place process is happens at a slower pace height is basically the height of a component right before we do all that let's take a look a few things first so the first thing that you need to set up is uh, the feeder slots and nozzle disable under this part you can disable or enable all your any of your nozzle if you decided not to use it for whatever reason let's say for example you have a damaged nozzle maybe at nozzle 4 so you can click it off and not use it right so but we have seen all four of this for today and um, as uh, we are going to use a vibration feeder vibration feeders will occupy space on your normal pneumatic feeder slots so in this case, a pneumatic uh, a vibration feeder actually takes up to five slots. I'm gonna install my vibration feeder at the back on the right hand side, from feeder 46 up to 50. So I'm gonna disable those slots, right? And let's take a look physically at the vibration feeder now. And here's our vibration feeder. So. The vibration feeder takes up to five spaces of the feeder slot, and you can see from here is up to forty six. Even though it looks like the forty six looks like being free, but it's being blocked by this knob over here. So when you put in a vibration feeder, it basically takes up up to five slots. Then you can start putting your feeder from number 45 onwards right okay so we are done disabling the vibration feeder uh, slots so you can click on ok after that and it's gonna give you a warning because I uh, usually if you already assign your components to a particular feeder and you come back to this process then this warning should pop up by then but you know they, the, there's some some flaws in how the way the software gives you the warning so this basically shouldn't pop up but it will you'll pop up again if, if you repeat the process okay then uh, you have this option called enable backup nozzle right enable backup nozzle if you were to enable it you can see it at a second column of the nozzle so this backup nozzle usually uh, option usually can be used if uh, for example your your uh, capacitors and resistors of 0603 they you can use either a five a nozzle type of uh, 503 or 504 so if let's say uh, you think that you do not want to use that many nozzle types in your project uh, you can enable this uh, backup nozzle so that is for example that you have a 503 here you can say uh, uh, you let the software optimize the nozzle type selection into something else maybe 504 
but I'm going to show you how, how this thing going to happen, right? So one way to fill up all the parameters here is obviously by manually, you know, filling up this thing, but this is not efficient and it's not the correct way to do it. Um, secondly, you can load feeder from uh, other projects. This is uh, a feature that is useful. Let's say you have other projects, right? You can you can click on them and uh, it's going to use that feeder configuration and setup that's being used in the old project and they're going to reuse it here. For example, if you you have components like let's say 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor, you specifically load the feeder in a, at a particular location and when you load that, that setup from that project, it means that you're going to use whatever setup that you used previously in that project. This, this is what we use in the earlier days of our ownership of the machine in the first couple one two project I guess we were thinking that if by doing that we would save time I mean we do not need to load a feeder you know a particular feeder of a particular component type into different sections of the slots this would, would save us time but uh, that's what we thought in the, the early days but then after we try it out once to let the software to actually uh, decide where to put the feeder, we found out that actually the pick and place process, the entire job, when you run a, a job, it runs actually at a way much faster rate than you were to uh, manually assign the feeder location. Right, so I'm not gonna use that that method here, this load feeder from other project today, because I do not think that is the correct way to do it. Right, so we are gonna let the software to decide where is the best location to load, uh, to put your feeder. Right. So and the third way is the new way, basically that was introduced in this particular version of the software, is I believe is the correct and the best way to do it. So the third way is uh, being used by clicking this from footprint library so you can click from footprint library and again you're going to give you a warning do you want to update all the sector item from the footprint library you can click yes right so we just one click all the feeder are already actually being configured and assigned you know form is a provider to the feeder number and everything else Right. I am not going to talk a lot about the the footprint li library or lab, that's what they call it. But I'm just going to jump into that footprint lab part just for the short description on how things are being configured from that side. So I'm going to close this dialog and jump into system setting and go into footprint lab. Right under this, you can see that this is how does the footprint lab looks like. So by default, when you install this new software, it's, it's going to have one single file here. Obviously, you can create a multiple file if, if, if you think you want to separate them into those uh, default ones or those that is created by you. So we have since uh, taken the original single file, but I have subdivided into different categories, into types of different components. So it's easier for me to, to look for parts with different types of category right let's take a simple uh, take a look at the simple component for example a resistor of 0603 so you can see you have uh, some configuration like your dimension belt color is your tape color uh, which is incorrect it should be the tape color it can be white uh, or black or your transparent type of uh, tape right I'm not too sure what this extra chip in is uh, but yeah I have always since set it to zero and this thing peak tolerance per mm i i believe this is some a bit related to the old software uh, not really concerned us in this new software revision i have always set it from for 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 about that but i never really touch it and the rest of the stuff are like your camera you choose the component to use either the uh, fast small camera at the front or the high definition camera at the back or don't use any vision system at all, right? Then you have a visual type. This is the part that you need to select. Uh, they have some 
vision modeling that they use to recognize the components. Uh, in most cases, I will use the standard algorithm. There's also other type of uh, modeling like your SOT23 tree or some BGA or some um, other type of uh, different type of component. But in most cases, standard algo works perfectly, right? Then you also have the uh, this part. Uh, open loop is actually something uh, predates to their old software and is no longer being used basically. So and it will be marked as obsolete in the next release of the software. So please select at, mi at minimum closed loop of second order for most of your components. And closed loop of high order is only for your high defini definition cam at the back. So in most cases, I would just select closed loop of second order, right? Then other things are like your visual threshold. Uh, you can play along with this, a few parameters of this uh, later on. I will show you in the individual feeder setup and there's also this part called init chip angle i i believe that this is to use for when when you have when you buy components in the real right uh, for example texas instrument have the options of uh, uh, for your components to come in where the pin one location right the orientation inside the pocket of the tape uh, can be different i mean some some can then comes in uh, quarter number one, quarter number two, or quarter number three. It depends. So I believe this was the function to do it. But when I try this function, it doesn't work. But I believe they will they will fix it in the next future revision of the software. Right? Special scan rate is being used uh, if uh, the default uh, what do you call it uh, radius of where you should scan for the component. It should be bigger than the default value. I will show this again in the, in the individual feeder setup later on. And there's a few other things like your character check. This this I'm not too sure that this is the correct word to use. Characters, it should be more like dimension check, I guess. Then you have the tolerance for that character checks. This is at twenty five percent. But not all these are being enabled. If you now enable this, that means all these are not relevant to you. And also your Provider type by your feeder, you can be plate, plate is your tray, components in your tray and your vibration feeder. In this case, if we are using the normal pneumatic feeder, then the feeder type can be any type of the CL, different sizes of your tape. We are, we are using 0603 that comes in 8mm with 4mm uh, component distance in between them in the tape pockets. Then again, this is the peak cage pressure offset per mm. This is uh, of, uh, the amount of distance that you want the nozzle to go down further go down uh, on the feeder when you pick up the components this is basically to apply some some sort of pressure when the nozzle goes down to pick up a common component and the same thing here mount H is uh, the amount of distance that you want the nozzle to further go down to press slightly press a component onto the piece so it will basically stick to the pace, right? Uh, I, I usually use this this value 0 0.3 mm. It's, it's sort of a value that works with most of the stuff. And uh, this is what I use. And again, you have the nozzle here with several types of other nozzle type. You can select any type of it. In this case, I put it at 503. And the rest are related to the speed of your picking up and you know, the sort of stuff, right? And this footprint uh, match mode weekly is used if you were to select here as footprint match. So when you do a footprint match, you need to do a collect here to give him an example of the footprint, how it looks like under the camera vision system. Right, but we're not going to touch that for today. So basically that's how it looks like. And here the nickname, I think it shouldn't be nickname, it should be Elias or something like that. This is basically if you have your component when drawn in your PCB cat you have different type of naming so these are those aliases that the software might look at and then will assign this particular footprint model to it right simple as that okay I'm gonna close that let's jump back into the uh, uh, optimize right so once we are happy with this thing 
uh, I forgot here. So we did enable the backup nozzle. So for the 503 guys, I'm going to uh, enable it to use 504 if it's possible. So for all the 503 guys, I'm just going to make an option of it being able to use 504. I mean, if it's required. By using less different type of nozzle in a particular uh, project run, it would mean that uh, your machine gonna run a bit lot faster as it will be able to pick up uh, more components of the of similar sizes at one go so the rest i'm just gonna leave it as uh, i can't further optimize those other nozzles that is bigger right then you once you're done with that you're happy with everything click on the optimization so you need to click the one on the right hand side here and then he's going to show you the result of the assignment. So this is how the assignment looks like now. Right? And this is how it looks like from here. So the yellow ones are the unused and unassigned uh, feeder. Right? And less. And when there's uh, this i'm not too sure what color is this it should be this is orange but this one is slightly a light shade of orange uh when when they put a this this type of color beside a feeder it means that you are not allowed to assign anything here i believe this is this feeder is a 12 mm or 16 mm feeder so it occupies basically three slots when you put a feeder here the two adjacent slots cannot be used at all right Uh, I forgot something. Uh, click back on the optimize. Uh, as I wanted to, to showcase how to use the tray also, but I don't have any tray here. But I'm gonna use this guy, this 80 mega 4808. I'm gonna pluck out a few of them from the tip and put it on a tray and to showcase you guys how to configure this on a tray. So I'm gonna swap the provider here into a plate and this guy I'm going to auto assign it right and by doing that then I need to click back on the optimization once more click on the right button and I'm just gonna optimize an assign item and keep the rest as it is And now he has changed my 80 mega guy from a, a CL16 into a plate. Right, the rest is the same as it is. And you might have noticed that they are still keeping the slot here as it is because I have only optimized an assigned feeder location. Right, so we are complete in the feeder assignment. And uh, now you can click on the feeder plug. This is where they show you which uh, component goes into what feeder and which feeder. And we'll be using uh, only two types of feeder uh, nozzle here. As you can see, they have optimized all the 503 uh, nozzle into 504. So we are only going to be using two nozzle, 504 and 505. Right, and this is the least complete list of the component that we will be using. Uh, right now, I'm going to jump into loading all the feeder onto the machine. So, see you guys after this when I complete the uh, plugging in the feeders on the machine.
we are back from uh, installing all the feeders onto the machine uh, the components on the tray and the components on the vibration feeder was installed uh, earlier uh, so what I did just now was just installing all the feeders on the uh, pneumatics and electrical feeders right so now let's move on uh, be before that uh, this insert tab part here on the most right column I have never used it or when I did did it I mean this doesn't make any much difference or what other than changing its color so I'm just gonna leave it as it is right and I have already also installed all the required nozzle size 504 on the first to the third uh, nozzle uh, head and the last one is installed with the 504 size nozzle All right so we have to close this window and you can click on the uh, feeder parameter All right so i'm gonna start with the with the vibration feeder first and move then i'll move on to the uh, the tray components and lastly then we'll do the feeder Let's click on the vibration feeder. We only have one uh, vibration feeder uh, components, which is the, the uh, our serial flash memory, right? The first thing we need to do on any component is to basically set up the coordinates for the head to pick up the components. So click on the go to pick coordinates. So at the moment it's, it's not being set up so we need to move the head to the uh, the location of where our vibration feeder is being installed which is somewhere on the right hand side at the back of the machine. Right move it. You can see all the other feeders are already being installed okay we are somewhere around there let me check uh, e, I think that is the component that we are looking for yes so basically you just need to move the cursor to the center of the component it do not need to be that accurate but rough uh, estimate is good enough somewhere along there right so this is the our component okay more or less there and you click on the save pick coordinates right so now our coordinate is correct so the next thing we should do is to set up the nozzle uh, pickup height. So the first thing you need to do is you need to click on this nozzle go to pickup XY. So instead of uh, moving the looking down camera, now it will move the head to the exact position that you have just set here currently. Right. So click on the nozzle go to pickup XY. So now, now the camera that you are looking at uh, is no longer looking at the component, but but your the nozzle, the nozzle that is going to be used, which is the nozzle four size five o five, is exactly at the position of the component. So now you need to click on to set up the height. You need to click on this vibration one base H, right? Well, this is not being set yet so but you can do on this check okay uh, this is the check mm. okay now we are on nozzle 4 this is basically nozzle 1, nozzle 2, nozzle 3 and this is nozzle 4 so you can click on go to and if you were to look at the nozzle it will go down oh we haven't set that yet so 
uh, you need to lower down the nozzle down all the way down until it touches your IC right once you have done that then you can click on save right as you can see the height now is being changed so once you're done with that you click save you can close the dialog right as you can see there's a change of uh, the height here right based on that there's another way of doing this with this uh, new uh, software revision is basically to use this vibration one base height so what you do is um, you need to set this set up this height right so let me pull a nozzle up first by clicking the zero okay so I'm gonna go to the pickup coordinate bag right I'm gonna set up uh, the height of the the uh, of the vibration feeder base as the plate here usually this is a uh, more or less the height of your components of any components in the vibration tube in generally I mean unless it's some very tall uh, maybe a connector or a tantalum uh, capacitor or something like that so I gotta move my I gotta move to nozzle go pick up height first but then I'm going to use manually, I'm going to jump the head to move slightly to the metal part of the vibration feeder, right? Then I'm going to use the, again, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to move the nozzle down until it touches the vibration feeder, the metal part, right? Once you have done that, you click on the save height okay and I'm gonna close it okay but now this is uh, the offset which is incorrect in this case now we need to change this value so what is the height of our component our component is 1.75 right but offset is the value of that you want the nozzle to go down further once it reaches the uh, the component so basically i set around the value of 0 0.3 right so we do again we do a check but first we need to move to the we need to pull up the nozzle up first don't 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 move the head without pulling up the nozzle that will damage the nozzle itself then click on the nozzle go to pick up xy and then you do a check here right click on check and uh, click on go to as you can see now the head has moved to the correct uh, height to pick up the component right so and uh, there's a few more settings here uh, the first one is this uh, this 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 part is the uh, the speed of the nozzle going down to pick up the component usually I will set around 50 the maximum is 64 so 50 40 to 50 sounds like a pick a nice value to set so usually I'll set amount about this this kind of setting 50 50 and this is usually I put it slightly about 30 more or less that uh, then this is the pickup setting and uh, you can after that one is done then you move on to the mounting setting right so before we do the mounting setting there's one particular parameter that you need to do so click on the system setting here uh, not system setting uh, device calibration so it's under the fixed parameter we need to uh, set this if you haven't set haven't done this so let's let's take a, a a look at uh, whether this is actually being set I believe mine has already been set but let's go through it once more so you need to move the head uh, 
to the PCB area. Move to the PCB area. Right, and usually I would choose a, a board in the center of the panel. So this will be just nice, but you need to position. Don't look at the camera, but the nozzle needs to be in the center of the board, not, not the looking down camera. Right, so if you were to see, now our head is more or less in the center, right? So now you click on nozzle 1 and click on the go to as you can see the head now lowers down and you need you need to check whether the head is actually just touching the pcb that is what you want it to be right so our nozzle one is okay so click back on zero it'll go up and click on nozzle two now let's check on nozzle two let me shut go down two i think this one is a bit I, oh no, it's correct. And pull the nozzle up. And we proceed with nozzle 3. As I said, I think I have said this earlier. So you move to nozzle 3 and you click on go to just to check on nozzle 3. That is correct as well. Pull up the nozzle and check the last nozzle number 4. That is correct as well. As you can see, the the amount of uh, distance that it goes down, it should be just nice. I mean, not to the to the point that where the spring on your nozzle is being compressed. So when you are doing that, I mean, uh, you are not doing it correctly. It should be just nice, right? Then we gonna pull up the nozzle. If you are done with this part, there's nothing to be safe. If there's any changes you want to do, you should click save. Right, close on this dialog and let's go back to the vibration feeder. So let's move back to the other side. Click on the go to pick up. Uh, so from here, there's a few settings here. The first thing is the height. So this is the height of the IC. It will be used to calculate uh, the mounting height. So this IC has a height of 1.75 mm. So you, you need to make sure that this particular parameter is correct and you know it's, it doesn't deviate too much from this value and uh, so the first party we need to fill up is uh, this uh, there's still a bug actually this this whole few parameters should be actually being filled up by the footprint library but i suspect there is still some bug that is not fully pulling all the parameter into this so you might need to check this right but as uh, as it is i gonna change this value accordingly so offset for mounting is the amount of uh, distance you want a nozzle to further go down once you have reached to the uh, flush level horizontal level of the nozzle when it's putting down the uh, mounting down the component on the pcb so usually i use a, a value something about this 0.3 mm to 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 this offset it works quite well with most most components so this is what i use and again down speed uh, 55 is a bit too high for me for something that big i usually will put something like 40 and another 40 for the up speed and uh, mount delay something like 30 that that will be okay right and then um the next thing we need to to check is the visual parameter right um let's the best way to do this is to pick this as this components will be using the fast camera you can do the pick to fast uh, camera to to do a test so let's do this pick to fast camera right as you can see it's being picked by the by the nozzle correctly but click on the visual test if there's no error that means uh, the component has been identified correctly i mean it's not missing there or 
or anything like that so but then you need to click on the real-time visual right and click on yes see uh, this, this is where we, we have a mistake here um, and again this is due to the one of the bug in the, this particular version so by right it should pull everything that I have set up earlier from the footprint library but these things are not being filled up so we need to fill it up for now right the first thing we need to do is uh, as you can see the camera now only looking at anything that is uh, below this within this particular radius the, the part that's being black black color so we need to because this is the default radius that the camera will scan for so we need to click on the special scan r but default is 150 so we need to increase it so now it covers a larger area so this is one of the most important uh, uh, parameter that you need to change for anything that's bigger than the default uh, radius so i'm going to set it to this uh, slightly smaller not too big but enough to cover up the okay sorry for the noise that was the compressor kicking in so i'm i'm having a 50 liter uh, air compressor so it, it doesn't hold that much of air so if you can try to get something bigger like 60 liter or anything bigger than that right okay so back to the thing so we have set up the uh, special scan radius to this so keep it as this and um, another thing that you can set if you want to is to match the uh, length and width again this uh, this length and width should be pulled from the footprint so maybe we try try to pull it in come here well, I need to stop the real-time tester. So I can click stop, but I'm gonna pull in the footprint, one well, footprint library. I'm gonna auto the yeah, update, and as you can see, this this value all should be there, right? Uh, again, we click on the go back to the start real-time test. See, but this is a bit too big. I'm gonna adjust it. I'm gonna do my adjustment later in the footprint library too. Right, this mesh length and width is uh, the the vision uh, system will evaluate whether the length and width fits within uh, this this uh, value that you have set 5 mm times 6.2. Uh, but I put a tolerance of 25 percent, so that's all right. Thought I'd like uh, uh, giving a leeway if uh, there's some uh, vision unable to to calculate the length and width as is seen from the camera right and uh, this particular match length and width is very important in the case that if uh, let's say if the nozzle pick up the component on the side and it's hanging vertically so that's one way for you to detect that uh, the component is not being picked up properly but it shouldn't happen but in some cases it happens because uh, uh, your for example your vibration feeder is not pushing up the component correctly it's stuck halfway and you only like manage, manage to partially pull up the component then you end up having a component being you know held vertically instead of horizontally right that's one of the uh, reason why you click on the match uh, length and width and the other one is the special high cam LED so this is to uh, change the amount of uh, light LED intensity uh, different from default the default value most of the time I do not need you do not need to touch this I mean for most I would say 99% of the components right only in special cases you might need to adjust this so I'm gonna leave it that as it is and another thing to look at is the uh, the threshold so this threshold by default is at 127 so this is enable you to you can see as I change it the vision system will be what how it is uh, inside the shape of the component depends on this value so the value of 127 is a pretty good value to begin with so usually I'll just leave it at 127 and again but this also depends on the component certain components need some some value changes on this 
right as it is i think we we are good on this the vision system managed to detect and i'm gonna stop the real-time uh, visual test and i need i'm going to throw this into a bin into a location that i have already set up on the machine right just click on the throw and it will remove the component from the nozzle and put it at a place that you have set up right once you have done that basically this component has been already been set right and you have other setup like the cam led parameter you can adjust but we're not going to touch that for this part it's not needed right but i'm going to do a, a placing test for this particular component right so this component just just close this particular window for now and we will move back to the list of the component on our pcb you can click on um, the array order is what our default uh, how the component is being listed when it's being group order it, this is when you say group order it means that uh, this is the group of component that the head will pick up at at one time it means this is for uh, yeah it'll be picked on nozzle one two three for this one batch then for the next batch you're going to be picking up this the next these three components and so forth but usually i like to look at it in on our default pcb component list right so let's take a look at the component that we want which is this uh, let me take a look mm. We need to look for for the first panel on the top left. So it should be yeah, I found that guy. Right. So you can right click. Let's let's take a look on where the component is first. So go go to so the uh, it is at the correct location. Pin one is here right so you can right click on this part and do a S chip smt test but you have to ensure that all your setup is already being uh, set correctly else it, sometimes it's going to be quite dangerous especially if your nozzle is uh, being set at the wrong height or the wrong position it might poke to somewhere that is totally wrong uh, right so let's try that right so that was very quick i guess one of the reason okay but our pick and place was accurate and you know spot on but there's one thing that i would like to change because the machine was moving way much faster than i like there's one thing that i forgot to set up is the click on the smt run See, at the, at the moment it's running at uh, at 60 the maximum is 64 so usually I'd like to run it at something slower something like 40 that that is what I'm comfortable with because uh, the machine currently is being uh, is on top of a custom built uh, table is a is a stainless steel 60 kilo table that I made uh, it's not that uh, that uh, steady and rigid because I didn't bolt it down to the floor and it, it has also a caster wheel that can be adjusted to become a permanent that means the wheel won't move around but it still it is not that uh, as uh, sturdy and rigid as you were to put the, maybe uh, the machine on the table is on the floor itself right so I, I gotta set it to 40 so that's the value I'm comfortable with right and you need to disable back the edit so you will not be accidentally editing it right that's a, that's a nice feature actually so go back on the pcb edit so as you can see our component was correctly mounted exactly at the correct place with the correct orientation of everything right right so let's move to the the second feeder type that we want to configure which is the plate or tray right uh, first thing we need to do is basically to generate the 
uh, pick up coordinate so you need to click this pick up uh, pick coordinate xy list right in this step we need to tell the machine where are the locations of the chips to be picked by the nozzle right so now we need to move the head towards the area of the tray on the machine right i have a jdec tray installed here mounted on the machine using the mounting fixture provided by the machine right this is a tray actually is not intended to be used for this particular ic i use in this design the ic is a six times six no it's a four times four mm ic but uh we have a 5 mm version here so because i don't have the ic actually in this tray format they will pull up from a from a reel actually right so um, as you can see i didn't put the ic the first piece of the ic on uh, on the most left uh, position most left column here one of the reason if uh, is uh, if you were to look at the the head right you would look at the head the nozzle as this ic uses the head number four nozzle number four this guy over here um, if you were to move the head to the most left position of your machine it it will not be able to to be able to pick up the most uh, left column of the tray so you will try to use uh, select your nozzle number four and try to push down you can see that it only managed to cover up to the second column so the most left column is not being able to be picked by the uh, nozzle this is true for this particular machine which is the 50 feeder version but if you are having the 64 feeder or the 80 feeder or even the 96 feeder that shouldn't be a problem because those mission machine are way much bigger and they have uh, they can support up to few i think if i'm not mistaken couple of jdec trays at the same time but this for this machine this is the one of the limitation right so that's one of the reason that uh, I'm not using the first column of the tray. Instead, I'm using the third one, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to let the software know the four coordinates of the four corners of uh, of the tray that you're going to use and the location of it in the x y coordinate, right? So you just need to set up. The first point which is the top left of the tray you can just roughly set it. it it is not that important to be that accurate so once you are done with that click on the first this box and click on save right then we move to the bottom left move the head to the front Which is this guy? I'm I'm creating a ten times ten uh, tray configuration, ten columns and ten row. So again, we just need to set the center of the. It's not the center of the IC, but basically the center of the, the what they call it a cup top that holds the IC. Right. So that roughly is the center you can click on save by clicking this particular box first and click on save then we move on to the right hand side bottom right 
obviously the tray is not 100% per perpendicular to the xy axis on the machine so that is why you can see there is some angle deviation along the axis right so then click on this one and click on the save button again then we need to do it the same one for the top right hand corner see you it's obvious that you can see the tray is not exactly perpendicular to the x and y axis on the machine okay you can click on save once you have done that you need to change how many columns and uh, how many rows that you want for this tray in our case it's 10 times 10 so we have a uh, yeah. By right, we have 100 pieces of the IC on the tray now. Once you've done that, you can just do a check to, to see whether the what you have set just now is at the correct place. Just, just a routine check. Yeah. It's always best to do this. Right, once you've done that, you can uh, click on the generic pick XY. So now all the coordinates for all the IC, which is 100 of them, the coordinates is being generated. So you can just click on uh, go to XY then to check everything is in the correct position. I don't have that many installed a tray as you can see only 4 at the top left corner and another three on each of the remaining three corners right and you can just simply pick uh, one of the ic and go to it should be moving to the correct position right so we are done with that you can close this part and then set up the rest of the parameters right as you can see oh so we have the same bug over here so this this parameter is supposed to be pulled up from our footprint library, but uh, unfortunately, it is not. <laughs> so what we need to do is click on the footprint, and we import it here again. Use auto is supposed to pick up the correct thing. So okay, everything is correct now, right? For that's what that's one thing that we need to set up for this particular tray is the plate one base h so this is basically to tell the 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 machine what is the the height of the plate right so move your we you can go back here go back to the pick and y location just select any of the coordinates and just go to nozzle go to right so now your zoom nozzle is exactly at the location of one of the ic or pick pick one that that has an ic that that is better so let's pick up number say number four one four right and we'll go to right then close back this dialog and go to the plate one base h and click on the go to height nozzle four is currently selected and the nozzle will go down and you can see whether the height is correct but uh, it is not so we need to lower down a bit more right somewhere around there so then you can click on save height right and close as we are not using any other nozzle for this tray this tray component so you do not need to use this function called synchronize to other nozzle if you were to click on synchronize to other nozzle this value will be populated on the rest of the nozzle right once you have done that don't forget to zero your nozzle to pull it up back right so that is basically what's been done and uh, as usual the offset is the amount of uh, distance you want the, the nozzle to further travel down 
one he had, once he has reached the surface of the component and the down speed up speed is basically self explanatory uh, i for this particular co component because it's a bit more uh, fine pitch so i slow it down down to 30 for down and up speed uh, to 30 and have a peak delay of 20 right that is for the peak z setting and uh, for the mounting and again i use the same parameter of 0 0.3 as i use in the vibration feeder component 0 0.3 mostly works for me for everything and the down speed also i set the same as the peak z setting the height is basically the height of your component so this usually you need to check your data sheet and to confirm that this is the correct thing right so now what we should do is we should try to pick up the component and try to look at it on our camera to see everything where it's right right so click on the pick to fast camera right and click on the visual test okay if there's no dialog pops out that means uh, it managed to detect the IC that something is there but we need now to analyze the, the component right so you need to click on your start real time right so as you can see our components being detected we can detect the ages of the component correctly but uh, our special scan radius is slightly bigger this can be made slightly smaller you do not need to be that big right as long as cover covers and slightly extend a little bit extra that that will be great right then another thing is uh, you should click on this visual debug uh, warning do not click this visual test button because that will crash the software i i think there's some right okay again the air compressor kicks in to refill right so don't click this visual test that will crash the software okay now you can click on this image here and it will pop up there are some important parameters so we are supposed to be getting an exact 6 times 6 mm but you can see there's a small deviation of 0 0.1 so what we should we do here is in order to be this uh, visual recognition process to be very accurate right because we have a 0.4 mm pitch here so 0 0.1 mm is quite big I mean compared to the pitch so what you can do here is you try to adjust this threshold this threshold value is used to to decide how much it should be I think it should be a bit less compared to the standard one two seven as you can see then we are nearing closer to the 6 mm border right I think guess I guess so 100 is a value that is more suitable for this particular guy maybe due to the color of the pins is slightly different compared to your capacitors and resistors right so i consider this is the most optimized kind of setting for this particular ic but once that is done we can close this right and everything should be okay click on stop real time and close this dialog and we can throw the ic to the designated area once we have done that, what we should do is we should do we should try a, a, a real pick in place of the component. But uh, so we're going to choose the same one, the first first PCB here. Let's the first top left PCB, right? And we're going to mount it here, right? So the position is correct. Uh, let's try to pick it. And see whether it works. Pin one is in here, right? Okay. Okay. So there you go. It's a bit hard to see where's the pin one because of the light. So let me try. Uh, let me try the light e. Nope. I think pin one is here, but our pin one is supposed to be here. Okay, I, I know what, what, what went wrong. 
right here is supposed to be zero degree so which is correct uh this is the exact uh orientation that we put on the tray which is correct but uh unfortunately the footprint that we drew in our in our KiteCAD footprint library right it 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 was drawn uh, was drawn quite some time ago before we draw start using the pick and place machine so back then we always you know practice that pin one must be in this particular uh, what they call it the first quadrant but in fact i mean in when you are using a pick and place machine that is totally different i mean uh, it it depends on what is the orientation of the ic on your tape or on your tray so the tray both the tray and the tape has the same exact orientation of pin one of the ic but unfortunately our footprint was being drawn by us in a wrong position so what you can do here is we can so what we need to do is basically rotate 90 degrees clockwise so what you can do here is you double click on the guy i see here so the angle here is zero but it's supposed to be 90 right so you the 0 0.04 here accounts for the the uh, what they call it the adjustment made by the machine uh, due to your PCB is not exactly perpendicular to the uh, conveyor belt right so you don't touch that 0 0.04 just leave it as it is but you add a 90 degree to it right I'm gonna add 90 and click on save here so this is one way to do it right save save and it will ask you because it knows that this is a panel when you modify one chip it's the rest of the chip should be following the same thing so I gonna do this so and it will be applied across on the panel but but let's let's click on it but modify all boards already chip right so it will do that but you must remember that the first PCB on the top left is not being mirrored but so these changes are only apply on the PCB in the same orientation to all the PCB on the left hand side the first column of the panel right for the second for the second uh, uh, column which is being mirrored it is not being applied right so we need to take a look at this guy again click go to you see it by itself by default itself it has a 180 degrees uh, what do you call it um, angle right uh, but in this case what in we need it to be is uh it needs to be mm, we need to change it by wait, minus 90 right so we need to apply the same thing so if this is different if you were to click here and change the angle over here it's different compared to you change over here why if you were to change uh from here see you can manual fill or you do this stuff right from here you can use one of this shortcut it would work but it will only apply for this particular component it will not prompt you any any dialog to ask you to apply across the entire panel so if you want to apply across the entire panel so what you need to do is you need to click on this dialog and change it from here so as we are going to minus 90 so this angle will be uh wait I'm, I'm a bit confused here uh, zero yeah it should be should be minus 90 actually. should be minus 90 right click on save and it will ask you again modify all array chips but this is on the mirrored PCB so it will apply across all the mirror PCB on the second column. Okay. So that that should be enough. Uh, but what we can do is let us try on the bottom most guy over here, which is if you were to scroll down, is the last PCB on the bottom left, bottom right. Uh, and it will be this guy so just try to click on the go to okay yeah now the correct position as you can see it's being applied here so minus 90 degrees and let's try to do a pick and place on this particular chip
right see we got it correct pin one is here i know it's a bit hard to see this but let me try to off the light aha uh -huh. okay right you can see pin one is here okay pin one is here. so we are a bit more a bit correct this is the 0.4 mm uh, pitch component okay let's turn back the mark light again right, so far i guess is we are we are doing good but by the end of this video i'll be i'll show you i'll pull out the pcb and i'm going to show you how how much accurate that we have done on the pcb i mean the pick and place process all right so let's move on to the next uh, feeder uh, which is the our normal feeder pneumatic feeders all right so the we gonna i'm gonna pick uh, several types of uh, components to be set up i'm not gonna set up everything but uh, I'm just gonna run through uh, several components that are quite different from each other so you will get a, a some sort like a picture of how to configure things uh, differently right so the first feeder that I want to choose is the WSON 10 package uh, this uh, IC so again you can see the all the parameters are not being pulled up pull from the the footprint lab uh, during the feeder optimization process so but I have figured out that uh, by clicking on this footprint lab button over the bottom here you would be able to basically pull every single uh, footprint lab parameters to all the feeders so I'm gonna do that as you can see every single components uh, parameter being pulled from the uh, footprint lab or library and being applied here as you can see the value has changed now it has a proper height has a proper dimension and uh, several other things right so the first thing we need to set up is the uh, pickup height uh, pickup location so the first thing is to click on the go to pick location right and uh, with this particular new revision of the software version 8 it has a feature that i really like and i think it's very very helpful in uh, uh, setting up a machine which is the automatic correct peak uh, coordinate xy so click that one right what it does is basically it will find the location of the peak the pickup location for all the feeders right uh, there's a few several uh, things for you to choose here one of it is the tape color you need to select the correct tape color so in this case our tape is black color so click on black right and uh, you can enable the auto save so whenever the pickup location is being figured out by the software you will automatically save the pickup location right so i can enable that then you can click on the stack six feeder here which because we are currently at uh, feeder six so as you can see yes i managed to figure out the center of the pickup location so this is basically the, the result is already being saved automatically right but you can click save if you are a bit paranoid like us yeah, there's an option of this uh, correct all also so this function is usually very important if let's say you, you have uh, done this project before you have closed it and then maybe after further few months you want to run the same project again so after installing all your feeder on the machine so you can click on correct all this all so it would be able to uh, uh, determine the pickup location uh, for all the feeders right before running an actual job right so that's the option of doing that so once one is done you can close this side and what we need you need to do basically when setting up a pneumatic feeder is to check the pickup height so click on the nozzle go to pick xy right uh, so now now the nozzle e is positioned exactly at the peak peak location okay so you can click on this check here and as this particular chip only uses uh, nozzle 1 so currently we are uh, using nozzle 1 uh, and the nozzle 1 is positioned exactly on top of the IC now so click on go to and this will lower down the nozzle down all the way to the component and you can do a check on it whether the nozzle uh, is actually touching the surface of the component so mine is fine so i'm just gonna be 
uh, pulling up the nozzle up again by clicking the zero here and uh, you can close this you do not need to save anything because there's nothing to be saved right and the the rest of the parameters such as uh, the offset is the value that usually i use this is just for the nozzle the amount of distance you want a nozzle to further go down once it has reached the surface or the reach the top part of the component right then down speed and up speed and peak delay is basically self-explanatory uh, usually i put at 50 for this type of component um, then for the mount z setting uh, one of the most important part is the height the height is the height of your component so please refer to your data sheet for all the components that ensure that this is the correct value right and uh, Again, uh, for mount, mount Z setting, it, it has a similar uh, offset too. So this should be, I usually use 0 0.3 and it works with most component, right? And the down speed, uh, you can up to you, 50 is, is okay. But uh, for, this is quite a fine pitch, I see it's a 0 0.5 mm pitch. So usually I will slow it down a bit uh, because uh, a faster rate you know would provide uh, would, would result in a slightly not that accurate uh, placement result right other than that uh, you can enable or disable the language uh, check this is basically to check uh, uh, if a component is being picked sideways let's say it's hanging on the side of the nozzle and you will be able to detect that it's not correctly being picked and if it fails it fails this check then within a certain tolerance then it will be the component will be thrown inside the bin automatically right so all this has been set up now we can do a, a quick uh, ratio test by picking up to fast cam if the component is smaller than 10 times 10 mm then you should be using the smaller fast cam at the front but if it's bigger than that then you should be using the high definition camera at the back so let's try to pick to fast cam and take a look at it at it uh, under the camera but it's unable to detect okay one of the reason is uh is usually with the threshold here so we need to play around with the threshold but before that uh, i'm gonna click on the real time visual here we're gonna run the visual uh, recognition system as you can see it's unable to detect the chip so this is usually due to the wrong threshold value being selected here but as this i see is the pins and pad are slightly dull compared to say capacitor and resistor so we need to adjust this value right uh, you can click on the visual debug right and click on this image this will pop out and it will give you some very important parameters here like the chip and the angle deviation the rotation and so forth right then you can start playing with the threshold value play around with it until you get close to the dimension that you want right as you might be aware that uh, the chip is actually a 2.5 times 2.5 mm but uh, we are really quite, quite close at the border where the the top and bottom part of the IC the, which is the plastic part is is unable to be detected properly if we were to reduce further down then we, we might run into it detecting the nozzle itself rather than the body so I guess a value about about 80 about that is is okay right so this is where you should stop adjusting the threshold value so now we have managed to detect the ic properly you can uh, stop your real-time test and click on visual test see uh, now a dialog pop up that uh, complaining about unable to detect the chip is no longer, no longer uh, present right so basically we have managed to set up the feeder for this particular ic and now i'm going to throw the ic into the pin right so let's move on to the next uh, part i'll be taking a uh, feeder number nine which is a SOT323 uh, MOSFET right? it's basically a P MOSFET um, as you can see all the parameter has been pulled up from the footprint lab accordingly right? so 
the height is uh, the we can check one thing we can we need to do before that is uh, to check the pickup location so again we run the automatic correct pick and place pick coordinate xy and this is a black tape right and click on stack line feeder right it managed to figure out where is the pickup location accordingly so click on save or do not need to because it's automatically being saved close on the dialog then we can do a check on the nozzle uh, this chip also uses only one nozzle to pick to be picked up from the uh, from the tape so click on nozzle go to and do a check and just press on the go to to see whether the nozzle goes down to the correct uh, height so in my in my situation it, it is correct so i'm just gonna pull up the nozzle again and close this dialog right again uh, the other parameters such as the offset and the speed everything uh, i'm gonna use this these values uh, and the height of the component is 1.1 mm uh, so this must be accurate and follows your whatever is being stated in your data sheet right and again uh, you can do a mesh language but i'm not going to use it because uh, this particular uh, component is quite uh, consistently uh, being pushed being been at once on the feeder without any issue so let's do again we need to do a, a pick to fast cam just to figure out whether everything is correct again it's managed being detected so there's no pop-up dialog complaining about no IC there so let's do a real-time visual test as you can see it's being uh, correctly detected so there's no issue with that do not need any adjust any value so I'm just gonna stop it and uh, throw the component to bin right then I we basically this is done for this component and I'm gonna jump to the next component I'm going be I'll be picking picking up this component 30 uh, in feeder 13 this is your regular 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor right and click on the go to pick up coordinate so this component is installed on an electrical feeder we have several electrical feeder on our machine we the reason that we started using electrical feeder was uh, we were having issue with very light components such as very thin leds and they were jumping out from the pocket uh, of the tape quite frequently when used with the normal pneumatic feeders so we figured out that uh, when you use an electrical feeder, those problems tends to go away most of the time. I would say close to 100% and we don't see those uh, issues anymore. But uh, we also figured out that by using uh, electrical feeder for components that are widely used or uh, used in a high quantity on a board, uh, it, it would sort of uh, help you know, to reduce the amount of uh, the air being used. You know. Uh, is to reduce the amount of uh, amount of frequency of the air compressor is being filling up right as the electrical feeder uses a motor to advance the tape right so we use it on this 100 for, for that particular reason so again we can do the uh, apply the same uh, same procedure to this particular feeder click on the automatic correct pick coordinate xy click on feeder 13 so we managed to detect the tape color is white remember All right close it as this no this particular component is being picked up by three nozzle nozzle one two three so you can check all of them whether the height is correct click on nozzle go to and click on check and you can click on go to and nozzle one will go down all the way down to the uh, component right then you can you must pull it up pull up the nozzle one then again now you select nozzle 2 and click on nozzle go to pick xy then now your nozzle 2 is at the pickup location now you can click on go to to lower down the nozzle just to do a check again nozzle 2 is also correct so you can zero up the nozzle 2 and repeat it for nozzle 3 right and click on nozzle go to and click on go to as you can see uh, even for nozzle 3 everything is perfect so if if you were to set up the the feeder base this is a part of the calibration uh, to be very accurate you shouldn't have any issue right these things should be all should be spot on which is our case uh, with our setup at the moment right 
and the rest of the values is similar I'm gonna apply it across for the pick and mount setting there's not much uh, of a difference between them and the length and width, width is uh, corresponds to your 0603 uh, capacitor component right we can do a quick test again for this particular component uh, click to the click pick to fast cam again there's no issue detecting the, the chip you can start the visual test right again there's no issue with detecting the the capacitor right i can stop the real-time vision test and throw the component into the bin okay so we're gonna move on uh, to the next component i'll be choosing a resistor just for completeness right uh, again we need to set the pickup coordinate click on stack 14 feeder again you managed to detect we have a white belt here right save it there's nothing wrong and you, again you can do a nozzle uh, height pickup height check if you want so i don't know check just do a random check again is it correct i'm gonna pull it up as uh i'll be trusting the software to do the for nozzle tree as well so i won't be checking it right again uh the setting is similar for both pick and mount setting with the correct height this this is a resistor 0603 with a height of only 0.4 mm so that is very important and the rest are like the pick to fast cam uh, we can we can try the pick, pick to fast cam just by trying once right we are using nozzle tree selected nozzle tree then it will try on the nozzle tree now again manage to detect uh, start the real-time test have no issue detecting the resistor so we're gonna stop it and just gonna throw it okay there's a few more setting at the bottom here uh, like the cam led parameter so these are the stuff that i don't usually don't touch i keep it as a uh, default this value seems to be working fine with my setup 250 across all the fast cam uh, led and also these are the values that i use for the high definition high definition camera at the back right then there's one most uh, configuration that you need to touch is the special config so this first part is the peak mount height in offset mode so this version of the software version 8 uh, started to use the offset based uh, calculation of the peak and mount height so it doesn't no longer use the absolute uh, height which was used in version 6 point something right so you need to enable this uh, if if let's say you uh, you had a project that was created in a uh, older uh, software revision but you're going to open in this this particular uh, new software revision they, they're going to ask you whether you want to to migrate from the old way of uh, calculating the pickup height to this so once you enable this then it from then onwards you will need to set the pickup height based on offset rather than obsolete value okay so the next option is not to open vacuum at once i have never used this before but i can uh assume that this is useful for let's say components that are easily being uh, sucked let's say maybe they are very light so they only open the vacuum when once the nozzle is exactly near at the component pickup location this is what i i think it it, it can be useful right and the last part is the back feeder auto run 100 degree, degree angle so this is useful is used when you have feeders being uh, installed on the back like in our case so you need to enable this and uh, it will automatically uh, add the 180 degrees uh, uh, rotation because now the feeder is being installed at the back so enable that if you have the feeder uh, installed at the back click on ok right again it's going to give you a warning because the because of the we have enabled the pick cage based on the offset right just click ok ok so then we're going to move to the one more component from the front side of the feeder which is the uh, diode this is a SOD 3 to 3 diode but it's a shocky diode so again repeat the same stuff we are going to set the pickup location it's not an issue for here black tape remember here right so I'm gonna do a check also on the height uh, it's big, it uses three nozzle for this particular component so 
you can check for all three or if you trust the software you can always skip this part so click on nozzle 2 and i just gonna do a nozzle go to again and click to go to again the height is correct zero and we'll click on the third nozzle and click on nozzle go to and lower down the nozzle right the height is also correct so everything is spot on okay uh you can try to do a pick and uh, a pick and check under the camera okay let's do that okay it looks like it's not centered but don't worry about that click on visual test there's no error dialog click on start real time test okay you managed to detect the chip strongly right so i'm gonna stop the real time test and click on throw okay we basically have covered most of the most common uh, components that use on most design let's do something more uh, what do you call it uh, less common uh, let's start with the LoRa 1 module installed on the feeder 31 right this is a slightly different component uh, that's the first thing we need to do is basically to set up the pickup location this particular chip uh, is uh, is mounted on it is installed on a 24mm reel so this is the first time we are using a 24mm reel so let's try to set up the pickup location uh, basically it's on a black tape right it's not a translucent okay i think the algorithm to detect the center for a bigger component is still pretty much still in works and it's not that accurate i guess so we have to manually set up for this guy remember we the center needs to be the center of the the pocket and it's not the center of the chip so roughly set that up so it should be more to the left yes yep and one two three four one two three four so i think we are good so you can click on save uh, and then the again the the rest of the, we can check the height again for this chip because i'm not too sure whether a 24 mm feeder has the same exact height as your other type of feeders we can do that so this chip only uses nozzle 4 so click on nozzle go to and click on the check and click on go to to lower down the nozzle again uh, there's a slight difference in this particular 24 mm uh, nozzle so we need to do some adjustment to the pickup height by lowering down the pick up height then click on save so those adjustments are being made right you can see it's no longer 0 0.3 but it's now 0 0.61 okay the rest as this i see is quite big i have slowed it down a bit to 30 30 with a peak delay of 10. again the height is important which is uh, 2.5 as accordingly from the data sheet and then we need to do uh, let's let's try to do a uh, uh, pick to camera but this guy is bigger than 10 times 10 mm so you need to use the the uh, high definition cam at the back so let's try to do that so then we click on the visual test no error then you can start real time test right you can click on the visual debug and click on the image and you can use it bigger for it to be easier to see as you can see uh we try with a smaller one to ensure that okay the yellow color line of the radius right that was the compressor filling time again right uh the yellow color line it indicates the radius where the vision system will check for the component so it seems to be okay the special scan radius uh, you can lower it slightly smaller right it still fits remember it must fit uh, and we're giving some a bit of allowance on the side okay then so once you have done with that click uh, on the size tool you could, so you could easily see the component under the vision system All right um, and you might need to adjust this but i think it it is fine the chip is about this size i think it should be it should be closer to 12 i i've noticed that the 
this particular module was specified at 12 mm to 12 mm but when i use the vernier to measure it it was slightly larger than that so i think we need to increase the intensity a bit Maybe you need to use the special high camera LED to play along. Maybe about that and let's play with the threshold. And I guess about that is closer to the our values here right I think that's pretty okay or oh, we can play with the LED a bit it needs to be slightly brighter To reduce the light, I guess. Well, that's more like it. Yeah, I think that's more like it. I'm gonna stop it here and uh, be done with it. Right, stop the real time test, and I'm gonna throw the IT into the bin. Okay. So we have finished set up that one and let's move on to the next one again is some weird looking shape uh, component which is uh, a UFL connector yeah I haven't have yet to try this connector but this is the first time so let's see how it goes again we need to set up the pickup uh, coordinate system the coordinate part is on a translucent tape Try again, yeah, image 2 is translucent, I'm not too sure why is it complaining, it's not being able, but it is, it is correct. As I said, uh, this algorithm is not that uh, perfect yet, but it's an ongoing uh, development still. Right now it's really working quite fine in my case. Again, you can do a nozzle check if you want to. Just it uses the nozzle number four only. Click on go to. Again, the height is correct. Uh, I'm not gonna do any changes to it. I'm just gonna pull up the nozzle up. And again, the rest of the setup is similar as the rest of the guys. And we just gonna do a pick to fast cam test. Again, it is being detected. No issue. Start the real time vision test. Uh, we need some adjustment here, I guess, on the threshold. Because as you can see, the green color box tends to rotate a bit. So because it is uh, having a bit of hard time deciding which part is which. So you can lower down a bit. So I think this looks fine now, right? So that is done, but I'm not going to do the match length width because disable it. Uh, special scan radius should be should be more or less there. Right, just can make it slightly smaller. Okay, then uh, that should be great. So I'm going to stop the test now and throw it. So I'm going to move on. Let's move on to the next one, which is a non-symmetrical component, which is the text switch. So let's take a look at this component. Again, to repeat the same stuff, uh, setting up the pickup location. Again, no issue. So let's do a nozzle pickup height check. Again, this is not necessary if you are 
your calibration of the feeder base height is done correctly and accurately. Okay, the height is correct, so nothing to be changed here. Gonna pull up the nozzle and let's do a quick uh, pick to fast cam. Run a real time visual test. As you can see, uh, we need to change the uh, radius a bit bigger okay and then we need to play a bit on the the threshold because currently it's not detecting the the top part of the, the switch right just more like it make some adjustment based on that so i think we are okay with that so I'm going to stop the real-time test and throw the component to the bit. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to take a, pick another component, which is the this MSOP10, right? Again, repeat the same stuff. We are going to set the pickup coordinate. Ah, because the tape was wrongly chosen to be black, so we try. Right, it has no issue doing that. All right, save it, and you can check on the height if you want to. Let's do a check for complete city uh, for completeness. In height is also correct. No adjustment is needed. Pull up the nozzle. Let's do a quick uh, vision test. Okay, no issue detecting it. Start a real time test. Again, this doesn't have much issue, so but you could adjust it slightly below until the pin looks bright and uh, shiny. Okay, I think that looks fine now. So you can reduce the radius a bit. It's not that big, I see. Okay, and that's about it. I think for this this IC. So I'm gonna stop the real time test and throw the IC to the pin. Right, again, that was the compressor kicking in, right? Remember, get a bigger air compressor, right? So I'll, I'll be setting the one last component, which is the GSTPH connector here. So this is a pretty big connector uh, and has also have a quite high height here, 5.5 mm. The machine can do all the way up to 7 mm, but I haven't tested it up to that limit, right? So again, we set up the location of the pickup uh, is on a translucent tip, right? As you can see, you're able to detect. Then uh, you can do a nozzle check if you want the height check. Maybe let's try that. Okay, that is perfect, right? Pull up your nozzle. Again, we can do a test under the vision system. This, again, this part is slightly below 10 mm, 10, 10 mm, so we can use a smaller camera in the front. Right, uh, click on the start real time vision test. Again, everything is okay, so um, you might want to slightly reduce so you can have that shiny look on the pin. That looks better. Right, other than that, the scan radius is correct. I'm going to disable the language match again. It's not needed in this case. And I'm going to stop the real-time vision test. So I think so far we are so good. So we have managed to set up most of the feeders on this project. And uh, we'll be moving on now to try to do a mounting test on those components that we already set up. Right, we have uh, mostly completed the pneumatic feeder setup. Now we're gonna do a, a pick and place uh, test on those component that we have already uh, completed the setup. Right, I'm gonna use the top left most PCB on the panel. So we are going to go from the left to the right. So it's easier for us to look at things from that perspective. Right, let's take, uh, let's take for example this tech switch, right. The tech switch is labeled as SPNO, which is this guy over here, right? So let's do a 
pick and paste uh, test on this particular component. Right, that looks very good. So I think there's no issue with that. And let's uh, try this particular UFL connector over here. The other, the UFL connector is this guy over here. So let's try it out. Aha, uh -huh. it's accurate, but the angle is wrong. So again, this is part of my fault because uh, the foot footprint uh, that was drawn in KiCad was orientated be wrong, right? So the chip supposed to be this guy here, supposed to be here. So the angle supposed to be uh, hundred eighty over here. So I gotta add. Uh, change the angle from here so if we if we were to add a 90 degree so this guy would be 179 right and again i want to modify across all different uh, pcb on the panel and don't forget we need to apply the same thing on the mirrored pcb which is this guy so right so we need to add 90 degree again to this so this will end up as zero degree right click on save and you will modify the rest of the component on the panel right so let's double check on that on the last most uh, bottom right uh, pcb on the panel the same component as, as you can see the angle has been modified so let's do a chip test and okay there you go so that's correctly being mounted so let's move on to the next component on the leaves let's take a look at the big huge module over here right so let's try this guy out So there you go, that is a quite huge module over there. But again, the angle was wrong. Uh, this particular module made by the rising high, high frequency, the module doesn't come with any sort of uh, documentation on the tape and reel information. So I was assuming that pin one was here. Uh, but again, I, I was wrong, right? Uh, so this is the outcome so i need to rotate this guy by 90 degree right mm -hmm. so we are going to do a add up a 90 degree to this guy so that should be able to correct it no no uh, i'm supposed to double click it so i'm gonna add a, a another 90 degree that means it'll be 179 right again I can apply it on the mirror guy which is this mm -hmm, this guy so this guy is 270 again it's same we need to make it into zero by adding 90 this will become zero degree right Again, we can try it out on the last PCB on the panel, most bottom right, and do a chip test. So there you go, the angle correction is right now. Right, It's a bit hard to see the accuracy of the placement from this angle because uh, the, the the module is high and tall so it might look like a bit offset but later i'll take out the PCB and we will take a look on the placement accuracy right so let's move on to the next one uh, which is uh, let's give it let's try the yeah the the bug boost converter right so let's take a look at where it is Okay, that's the guy so let's try it out yeah. 
So there you go. That is also correct. Turn off the light. But uh, this chip is a bit hard to see the point one, pin one, but uh, it is correct. Yeah, the pin one is here, somewhere here. And the orientation is exactly match. Okay, so we can try out a few more that we set up earlier. Maybe we can try the, yeah, this SOT23, 323 guy over here, so which is this guy. So run a sensitive test. Okay, that that is accurate and uh, exact. Nothing wrong with that guy. And let's try out this few uh, SOD 323 diodes. So we have uh, three of them. We could maybe just try one or two of them and see. This guy is this guy, All right? Let's run a cheap SMT test. Right again, that is spot on. Try another one, the same type. Okay, that is also well. And this guy. So we have no issue with that. Uh huh. So let's move on and maybe we try some. Uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors and uh, and maybe one of the uh, resistors that we have set earlier. Try to go to and check where it is. Okay. Right, that looks exactly where we want it to be. Can try another guy. Again, that is too also spot on and I'm gonna try the resistors right which we have config we too have configured earlier right so I'm gonna chip test okay that is correct and accurate another guy Again, no issue. So let's move on to this particular uh, MSOP 10 chip, which is the CH340E, a USB to serial converter. Okay, and that too as well. Right, so overall, I think we are doing good, but let's try this particular uh, connector over here is the tallest guy on the design which is this guy so let's let's try to do a pick aha uh -huh, we got the angle wrong again again we started using this uh, connector ages ago way way before we got the machine so the what we drawn on the PCB cap was again was wrong so uh, basically we need to uh, rotate the rotate the connector by 90 degrees okay um, yes we're supposed to rotate the connector by 90 degrees because over here now is minus 90 so this is uh, exactly wrong it's supposed to be 90 so I'm gonna change this And click save and uh, for the mirrored version which is this guy this is 90 which is wrong this guy should be the other way around this guy should be minus 90 instead again apply across all the same component across the panel and let's try it out on the last pan last PCB on the panel. So there you go. We got we tested most of the chip that we wanted to test uh, on our PCB now. So the rest are you know quite simple components like your resistors and capacitors, you know. Those stuff usually in my based on my experience uh they just work fine without much of uh, issues or problems right so as long as you follow all the, the tips i have given throughout this video everything should be mounted quite accurately 
right uh, so after this i gotta pull up the pull out the pcb and we shall look at the accuracy of the mounting right all right uh, i have just pulled out the pcb from the machine so these are the result of the pick and place uh, mounting effect right uh, it's gonna be a bit hard to focus but i will try okay let's start from the component from the left hand side right and we move towards the right uh, as you can see the the text width is okay but it's not fully i don't have uh com it's not completely under uh, the part is not completely on top of a double sided tape area so it's just hanging by the side here one of the pads here a second another pad having the double sided tape so but it just mounted just nice and this guy was uh have an wrong angle for the first part but we have seen corrected it and you can see that uh, it is okay now right so then we move on to the big module over here so it looks fine except for the again the angle was wrong right as again i would like to mention that big big components are usually okay and you shouldn't have any issue with it right but this is the uh, corrected one the angle corrected so you can see that it is perfectly fine right then we move on ah this is the most important guy on the uh, board this is the 0.4 mm pitch uh, qfn this is the one with the again wrong orientation of the angle uh, and you can see from the placement itself it is pretty accurate i would say very very accurate right so i'm very happy that uh, we managed to do this because uh, this is the most crucial part of the board and the, the one at the bottom here is the one that uh, has the angle corrected okay you can see that it is very accurate and spot on i'm very very happy so we shouldn't have any issue with that uh, so we can move on to the, the other components uh, this is the SOIC that was uh, mounted on you know was, was set up on the vibration feeder and again it's, it's perfectly fine usually the big big components shouldn't have any issue angles is correct and accuracy is spot on right then you can see also the others uh, these are the 100 nanofarad capacitors they are just perfectly being placed and you can see the resistor are uh, 206 0603 resistors and this is the 0.5 mm pitch uh, WSON and that guy too is a uh, very accurately placed so am I having any I'm not gonna lose any sleep over this uh, and the the SOD 323 is also mounted uh, accurately together with the SOT 323 right and lastly you can see the MSOP and MSOP 10 and if I'm not mistaken is uh, having a point 065 mm pitch that too is being placed accurately both the pin one is also correct right and this guy again we mounted it wrongly uh, the angle was uh, not right due to the footprint uh, drawn in the kite cat in the wrong direction and this guy again is the corrected one and it just mounted accordingly so i think i'm pretty happy with the placement so i didn't mount the rest of the component on the, on the board okay this one came out right the rest of the component on the board but those will just work just fine you know, normal resistor capacitor inductors you know and sot 323 or sot 23 all those shouldn't have any problem and even this large big USB-C type connector yeah they'll do just fine right so I'm very happy with the placement output so um, in the next video I will be uh, applying solder paste on the PCB and we'll be doing a real uh, complete pick and place uh, process on the board 
and I will show you a few more steps before doing that. So there's a few more things to be configured on the software side uh, before we can run the uh, a pick and place uh, job. Right. So from today's video, so you can conclude that if uh, you were to follow a certain uh, a set of rule and you know uh, a, a, a flow of work. Uh, correct. The word is a flow of work. Uh, then you should be able to achieve a quite accurate placement with the machine. See, you can imagine this guy is 0.4 mm pitch. So basically you can do quite a lot of stuff with the machine. Right. And so I'll be ending the video here and I shall see you in the next video. I hope you really like this video. I know it's pretty long, uh, but can be avoided due to the, uh, the amount of detail required for the for this guide so i shall see you guys in the next video right thank you